Hi, hello, I'm Marina, the one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants and welcome to Millennial Planter. So can you guys believe I had a whole vlog like filmed and as I was editing it, I just could not for the life of me get the lighting right and it was just, it's trash. So that was uh, trash, which is fine because uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel like I didn't really do much in the plant tours vlog other than uh, unboxing my first plant purchase of 2023. So that's exciting. But I will show you guys that those plants in a few because we're going to do plant updates. I'm actually so excited to do this video. I have been waiting all January to do a plant update video. I try to do these once a month. So throughout the month, I'm always like doing something with my plants. I'm either chopping some up or I am putting some on moss poles or I'm <laughs> trashing some plants. So this video, these types of videos are just a chance for me to show you what I've been up to the past month. And yeah, I have a lot of exciting things to show you guys. Also some updates of plants that I have been <laughs> chopping up the whole of January. That's just been like my, my go-to is just chopping plants up, chopping plants up. Uh, I mean like completely restarting them. I still have two plants that I want to restart and I'm going to do that in a video soon, my Diefenbachia reflector. And then also maybe my ficus umbellata. I'm not sure. I'm going to have you guys decide that one for me, but I'll, we'll get to that. Anyways, I hope y'all are doing fine. In that plant chores video, I was talking about how I'm still playing catch up, but I'm slowly getting back into the groove of things. My plant room was a disaster for like two weeks straight and my plants were just so thirsty, but I finally have like a good watering routine for myself that I think will help me keep up with watering my plants. And basically it's doing sections. You know, I've given this advice before, but I've never followed through for myself. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do like one or two shelves a day or every other day just completely like take all the plants down throw them in the bathtub shower them down or maybe I'll take like all of my climbing plants and take time to just completely spray them down so I think doing them in sections like that will really help me keep up with watering versus like taking plants here and there that are already super thirsty throwing them in my little watering tub and watering them like that like I feel like that just that whole process just took way too long for me and I still want to shower my plants down so that's why I'm going to be taking them into the bathtub although my kids are going to hate me because <laughs> every time it's a bath time I always have to like wash the bathtub um but anyway so that's what I've been up to I'm happy to report my plant room has been clean for the past like <laughs> four days which is huge this never happens to me this never uh my plant room never stays clean that long but anyways let's get on to the plant updates I hope you all are doing great I hope you all are having uh so much new growth in your indoor jungles um so let me know some plant updates in the comments down below and let's get talking or dm me on instagram I love it when you guys dm me on instagram uh i don't know why just it makes me really happy but i also like when you comment down on my videos anyways okay plan updates let's go okay so this is what the plant room is looking like at the moment i feel like i haven't done like an overview of the plant room in a while but here we are everybody is looking so nice i am just loving the way this exotica is turning out she just looks so pretty and I'm sorry the lighting's a little weird with the window being there, but yeah, she looks adorable. I do need to go ahead and attach more wall mounts there, but I just, <laughs> I love this so much. She's adorable. And here we go. This corner over here is looking nice and lush. I did go ahead and rearrange some things. So first off, I brought my Monstera Deliciosa up here because she was downstairs in my bedroom. So I swapped. I actually put my Pastazanum downstairs because that's originally where she was and where she was thriving and I loved her down there. But then my son got a hold of some scissors and cut her, which is why I had her over here but um that was a while ago and he's you know grown and <laughs> matured at least a little bit uh from like three years old to almost four years old so i don't see that happening again so i moved it back downstairs to my bedroom and i rearranged this area so now my king is over here which look at his beautiful leaf still hardening off his bloom did die off 
I didn't collect any pollen. I totally should have, but I didn't. And now my Orbifolia is over here, who's absolutely doing amazing. So this is a new leaf she just unfurled. And that is a new leaf she has coming in, which is just awesome. She's just killing it. And <laughs> usually I put her outside for the summer, but I am not doing that this year just because she's done so well. And she's in a huge pot. I know it doesn't really look that big, but this pot is massive and it's super heavy. And if I put her outside, I know her roots are just gonna get massive, like even bigger. And I, I can barely pick up that pot as it is. <laughs> so she's gonna stay inside and I'm excited to see how big her leaves get. Cause in the summertime, um, when I bring her in, her leaves always end up getting um, some sort of bacterial infection. So I have to chop her back. And at the beginning of fall, I had to do that. And she probably had like, three four leaves that i had left over and now just like look at how lush and beautiful she is so we're keeping her inside this uh this summer also my clear nervium bloom that i had tried to pollinate with my king which i suspected <laughs> wasn't gonna work it didn't work so that's fine and the bloom is starting to die but that's okay Next time, I'm just going to collect pollen from my uh, anthuriums and just work from there. So the most exciting update I wanted to share is actually with my climbing plants. So first off, can we take a minute to appreciate this beautiful philodendron melanocrysum leaf? <gasps> wow. It is absolutely massive. So one thing I want you guys to vote in the comments below is should I extend this pole, this soil pole, and add another on the top, which would make it taller than me. It would probably be five foot, five inches if I add that extension. But I mean, look at how massive this leaf has gotten in comparison to its previous leaf. Like you can see there's a significant size difference. So I feel like if I let it continue to grow, it'll just get bigger. And look, that leaf is already coming in, which I'm not very um, <laughs> attached to because this melanocrysum loves to abort leaves. So should I uh, extend it or should I chop it like I did already? Um, so here is the bottom melanocrysum stem. This is the one that I chopped from the top and it was already pretty rooted. So I was able to place it right back down there and now there's two stems in here. So if I were to chop it, I would plant it back in here and there'll be three. It'll be a very um, full support to grow support thing, but it would also be really cool. But this one uh, hasn't really sized up much yet. This is the cutest little leaf ever. And then it put out this leaf. You can see it's starting to like get really, it got really juvenile. So it goes from this type of sinus so you can see the differences in the sinuses. <laughs> uh, and then this is the newest leaf coming in. So this was set back pretty drastically after the chop. Meanwhile, the mother vine, the mother plant, <laughs> like she just, she knocked it out of the park. So let me know what I should do in the comments. Okay, now we can see it a little better, but I rearranged everything here. Y'all know I'm constantly rearranging this area. And I like the way that it looks. I grouped a couple of plants together I brought out this shelf here that was like in the corner over there just so I can see it better. My variegated panatum, remember I gave it root rot and I had to cut it back or cut all the roots off, is actually still going well. It only probably lost like two leaves and then the new growth there did shrivel up but I think that was just from me underwatering it because I've been so paranoid about giving it root rot again but I feel like panatums in general are more susceptible to root rot than like other epipremnums which is very interesting but I have cut back on watering a lot but she's still doing well which is really awesome because I definitely thought she was going to lose all her leaves like <laughs> my varicosum that I had to cut up like I did the same thing with my varicosum I chopped all the leaves back or all the roots rotted roots back and it completely went into shock overnight and was just like super droopy and limp so I had to completely chop up that plant 
but also the biggest thing is that I, I finally threw away my chia pets. It was driving me absolutely insane uh, how it just kept giving me all those really chlorotic leaves. Not even chlorotic, but all the leaves just kept losing chlorophyll. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, so I, I finally had to trash that plant. It was just, it was causing me too much stress. I even threw the cutting away. I don't know if the plant was sick or what uh so i wasn't really comfortable of giving the plant to anybody else either and yeah I, I i wasn't able to get any answers the plant had to go but in place i actually put my monstera siltipicana on a soil pole so it's still kind of like adjusting its leaves and whatnot but she is doing great <laughs> sort of uh yeah so she looks a little crazy right now but i'm excited i'm really excited to do this i barely ever see like really mature siltipicanas in anybody's collection so i'm excited to see what this one does it does have two vines in there currently and i used to have her on my bay window climbing up a window and while she was doing that she did give me like one teeny tiny fenestration so hopefully this won't be too difficult to mature i'm really excited to just see the process and ideally i should cut her back a little bit more but i want her to kind of establish herself first and then i'm gonna eventually add another extension and we'll see what happens from there i just don't want to do too much because i also had to repot her she was super root bound so now she's in a bigger pot and she's growing and i still have another salsa pecana that i'm gonna leave trailing because i really love this plant i think they just have the coolest texture to them oh yeah i'm super stoked about that and then the other monstera that i have climbing now is my monstera ag Acoyagurensis. <laughs> yeah, so this one's also really cool. I'm excited to see what this one does. Um, this one's on a wooden plank, as you can see. I also had to repot her. Uh, this one, I would say, is one of the more pickier uh, monsteras out of the monsteras that I've dealt with personally. And this yellowing leaf, unfortunately, I did lose some of her leaves uh, <laughs> or some of her roots. Uh, I kind of like was tearing off a bottom leaf and like the whole bottom half of the plant and stem came right off. But this part here still had like roots from a bottom node i don't know it was really bizarre that i did that so hopefully she doesn't suffer too much but i'm excited to also see this one grow and i really just want to see bigger leaves and see those fenestrations so now i have three monsters total because i also have my uh esqueleto that's over here on a wooden plank and uh honestly she's still you know not thriving but not dying <laughs> I moved my Squammy over here in this little corner. My El Chaco, that's her newest leaf that's completely hardened off. It's absolutely massive. And as you can see, those are the only two philodendrons or plants in general I have on bamboo stakes. And that's because I feel like the El Chaco doesn't need to attach to anything in order to get big. Like you can see how big that leaf is. And it's not climbing at all. It's just being supported by the bamboo stake. Same with the Squammy Ferrum. Squammy is just putting out these massive leaves. I actually have to give her a bigger bamboo steak because she's officially outgrown that one. But here's her newest leaf. And look at those aerial roots. They're so creepy. Ugh. And already a new leaf coming in. Um, back here we have my variegated Hartley philodendron. Hasn't really done too, too much. I need to reattach that top growth there because I need to make sure that she's starting to attach. Um, but yeah, she's doing all right. My philodendron is splendid. My, oh my, she's gonna need to be cut soon. Look, that's the newest leaf. And she has this one here. So this one, I am going to do the chop and planting her back in because I do want at least one more vine in here. I want all of my climbing ones to have at least two vines. If I can fit two vines in them, that's gonna be good. I'll be able to get really nice, beautiful leaves on both sides of this moss pole. But I think if I do end up extending the melanochrysum, I'll have to kind of switch them so the melanochrysum would be up against this wall and the splendid would come forward. And I actually think that would be really 
beautiful just to have this little chrysum fill in this spot here once it gets bigger if so I do end up extending it. So yes. Also, my, uh, Campos Portuanum leaves are slowly getting bigger, so that's exciting. Golden Dragon is putting out a new leaf, still not variegated. Um, she's just not getting enough sunlight or enough light because I heard that light is a big factor in their variegation. Cursiva put out all of its new leaves from all those crazy growth points it put out. So it's looking really lush, really full. Delantin Key is actually gonna be next up on my chopping list, uh, but I feel like she is starting to do something because we have one hole here. We have another hole here, but um, that actually might be cosmetic damage now that I think about it because <laughs> the skeleton key doesn't even have holes in it. Oh, okay. Anyways, Monstera Elbow is doing really well as well. And the Lodendron Painted Lady is also about to get the chop just because she is outgrowing these, this pole. And you all know, I hate these thin poles. Like she needs a thicker pole and her leaves are just getting really, really small which is crazy because she's like fully attached and rooted into this moss pole, but her leaves just keep getting smaller and smaller. So I'm almost positive it is a lighting situation. It could also be temperature as well because uh, the plant room does get pretty cold in here. It also gets really hot. So <laughs> drastic uh, temperature changes in the plant room. But yeah, she's getting really, really small leaves. That's annoying but i'm gonna have to chop her up eventually so that is all of the updates oh and my amedrium so <laughs> unfortunately she is not doing well i meant to share an update uh when i posted that video and i forgot but yeah she's not doing too well these sticks are not doing anything um i did pull out one stick that was completely rotted but her cutting back here is actually putting out new growth so that makes me happy. I was actually sad to see the other plant do bad because I truly love this plant and I'm still so sad that it went into such shock for me not planting it up like instantly because remember the plant was fully rooted when I cut it and I just let it sit out in my plant room for the rest of the day and I didn't plant it back until the nighttime and it just absolutely hated me for it. So I'm really happy to see that that's doing well. I also have a couple of pieces in my prop boxes up here that I haven't checked, but maybe we will get to that later. Also, my Gloriosum, my Glorious, is putting out a new leaf, finally. This one took forever to put out a new leaf, so I'm really excited to see it. Oh, it actually looks like it has two new growth points. So that's really amazing. I was really worried about this plant because you know, it's not looking too great at the moment. Uh, I may need to water it as well. And then, oh, my male eye. One of the male eyes I have is so beautiful. And then my Lemania is also doing pretty well. That new growth there, still looking healthy, hasn't dried up yet. I've been keeping an eye on it to make sure I don't underwater it. Also, coming over here, my pitcher plant is doing amazing, killing life. Um, my Claudex hasn't come back to life yet. I'm impatiently waiting. I'm really nervous. I mean, the Claudex itself still looks super healthy, and at least I think it looks healthy. I don't know. You guys let me know. It doesn't feel soft. Maybe it's thirsty. Maybe I should water it because that looks pretty dehydrated, but it still feels firm. Um, I don't know. Let me know what that means because she makes me so freaking nervous, that plant, and I love her so much. And then my Gloriosum that I chopped, like, okay, so here is the mother Gloriosum, but when I put her in here, I chopped some of her stem so that she would fit into this pot. And this was the remaining that I chopped. And it's coming out with two new growth point, which is amazing to see. <laughs> Actually, that second one is new because I've only ever noticed that one. So that's really awesome. And you know, my Ripsalis, ever since I put it in here, has not been doing well. Like it constantly looks shriveled up. And I don't know why, even after I like thoroughly water her. So I'm gonna leave her in my tub of water to let her like really soak up some water. Um, but that's actually making me really sad. 
Okay, now on to my newest plants. But first off, look at who's blooming again. Miss Bella. She's so pretty. So I actually got these plants from a local collector. She was selling some plants because she was getting a lot more plants. It's a whole thing. But this first Hoya, I was super excited about because I got it in a trade like two years ago and it rotted literally overnight. One day it was thriving, the next day it was like completely rotted and disgusting. And then since then they have blown up in popularity, but it is Hoya Chicken Farm. So good. I got both of these Hoyas for a really good price too, considering how big they both are. So she did have two leaves that unfortunately um, went into shock like she just went into shock because she was in like a really humid greenhouse like perfect environment and then obviously she was shipped to me so those two new leaves died off uh but she's just so beautiful you can see her splashiness there um i did go ahead and spray her with uh, sulfur fungicide because I ain't trusting nobody. I already told you all the new Hoyas are getting sprayed down immediately. So she does have sulfur on her, but um, you can see, oh man, I don't even think you can see it with the sulfur, but she does have a green on green variegation to her, which is stunning, absolutely stunning. But I was super jazzed about this. And then the next Hoya I got actually has two new growth points and it is a Hoya I've never heard of. I just told her like when she was asking me what kind of Hoyas I was interested in, I was like any Hoya I don't have that's a big leaf. So she suggested this one and I was like, I'll take it. But this is um, Hoya Monetea or Monetea, something like that. Um, but she's also really pretty, has really beautiful big leaves, which I love. I'm so excited to grow this one out. And she does have two tiny little growth points coming in right there that haven't dropped yet. Also, another really cool thing uh, is that she um, grew these in straight cocoa chips, which is amazing, really cool. So I don't even have to repot it. I kind of want to dabble in growing my Hoya in cocoa chips because uh, whenever I'm potting up my Hoyas in general, I always put them in a super chunky mix. So I think cocoa chips would actually be a really good idea. Um, and those Hoya roots are just so little and fragile and they grow on everything. So they really do enjoy and benefit from growing into like a, growing into a really chunky uh, soil mixture. And then I also think Unsolicited Plant Talks grows hers in straight cocoa, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, definitely something I'm gonna experiment on. Um, I just need to get some cocoa chips. But those are my two newest Hoyas. They were both only $50 for both of them, which I feel like is a really great price, like I said, especially considering the size of them. And that's probably going to be my last plant purchase for a while, just cause I don't really need any more plants. And I do have a lot of duplicates that I need to sell. So maybe once I sell all my duplicates and propagations and stuff, like my propagations that have turned into full plants at this point once I sell all those then I will definitely maybe get a couple more plants um, but yeah I mainly want to focus this year on getting like a couple more Hoyas and uh, maybe like one more philodendron but that's it uh, and you know I'm always like trading for them so I yeah um, if I get more plants it's gonna be trades I don't see myself like actually purchasing plants because I don't really purchase plants too often <laughs> But yeah, so I'm really excited about those. Okay, but since we're talking about Hoyas, let's talk some more about Hoyas. So first off, y'all, look at my Hoya coronaria, which, you know, she was like my number one reason why I wanted to treat my Hoya for flat mites. This whole new tendril and all of these leaves she has put out since I have been treating her. So I can't even tell you how excited that makes me because for so long, well over a year, she was just one stem like she grew for me so well when i first got her and then i don't know what brought the mites on but then after that she just stopped growing and then even after that after she stopped growing she started to lose all of her bottom leaves so her stem just got super bare and now since we've treated her she put out this whole new tendril and so many new leaves so i'm so excited that hoya is just so beautiful because it's so fuzzy and it's so underrated um same thing with my callistophylla my callistophylla has put out so many leaves 
look at how lush this vine is now. She also put out this whole new tendril here, which hasn't put out any leaves yet, but that's fine. As far as treatment goes, I feel like I treated everybody enough times, um, but I still kind of want to do like one more treatment. I don't know. Uh, maybe just I'm um, being like overly cautious at this point. Look at my lacanosa. Lacanosa is doing amazing. She's constantly blooming, but she's put out so much new growth, so many new leaves, so many new tendrils. I mean, she kind of looks sad right now because she has all these dead blooms, but I promise she's like really pretty and really happy. Same thing with this lacanosa here. This is my super silver. I put her in this cute little like cauldron planter and I love it a lot. And then I have my royal flush over here that I didn't think was going to do well, but she's actually growing really well. She's kind of just getting like really ambient, ambient light. So like whatever light from this grow light and then maybe like a little cast off from this, but yeah, she's actually still doing really well. My linearis has been popping off. Look at all of that popping off, like just doing the most. So I'm not complaining about that. I'm excited to see her grow more. This Syngonium, my mixed pot Syngonium, hasn't been doing like the best. Like it's not thriving, but it's not dying. So I don't know what I wanna do with her. Um, part of me wants to sell her off. Uh, I don't I don't know. Um, I just haven't, uh, I, I, don't, I just don't love Syngonium enough to like keep it. And I feel like Apothos would probably look a lot better sprawling along the wall than this Syngonium. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. My Australis that I put up here, my whole Australis is doing <laughs> really good. I love just seeing all of her tendrils go out and be crazy. I actually love that I put her here, but like... <laughs> Look at that. It's so long. I love it. So one of the th things I was talking about in the vlog I didn't post was my crystallinum. This poor crystallinum was so thirsty. It was completely drooped over. But then we had this leaf here. This is her new leaf. It's actually still hardening off, but it was so thirsty that that leaf felt like a deflated balloon. I have never felt anything like that. I have never felt a leaf that ever felt like latex it was so bizarre and i'm actually still shocked that she bounced back this well like i can't even tell you i will post like the the footage but this leaf was just i really thought she was gonna kill it off i'm surprised she didn't kill it off actually uh but yeah other than this cosmetic damage which definitely could have been there before just while the leaf was growing uh she looks amazing and it's still really big and yeah it's still soft so still growing uh, but that was really incredible to see. 69686 put out this huge, beautiful, mature leaf. I'm actually really obsessed with this. It's so beautiful. Oh, I'm obsessed with this plant. It's so cool. Also, my Hoya Australis Lisa, I really hope I didn't rot it. Like last night I watered her because she was super thirsty and her leaves still feel soft. So I don't know if she still needs to intake water but I will be devastated if I have to chop up this plant because I love my Australis Lisa so much. I mean, how can you not? Those leaves look like they've been watercolored and I was just letting her kind of do her thing along this trellis and along this lemon lime philodendron. I really wanted to see what she would do. And you know, if she wanted to crawl up on the wall, I was gonna let her do that as well. So hopefully she just needs more time to firm up but yeah, I love Australis Lisa, such an underrated Hoya, and it's just absolutely stunning. My other crystallinum here is growing really well, which just lets me know that this was 100% infected with flat mites because I treated her, and you know, previously she would always kill off that new growth, kill off new growth, kill off new growth. Um, I maybe got one new leaf in a whole 300, and 65 plus days, but now she has successfully given me like two new leaves plus this one since I treated her. So she's doing really well. Here's my Clarinervium's new leaf, which is so pretty. I'm so ready to get big, massive leaves on my Clarinervium. I love when Clarinerviums have those big leaves. I mean, they're just so stunning. Clarinervium is one of the best anthurium and one of the prettiest, hands down. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> 
Um, Epipram Nam Aplissima is doing really well. She needs a repot. Aplissimums do not do well in terracotta because they're such a thirsty plant. This is one of the thirstiest plants I have. Her and my philodendron pink princess just need water all the time. It's actually really ridiculous. One other cute thing I added, I got these from Target. They're just like little paper mache things for parties, I guess, but I thought they were really cute. So I added them to the plant room and then eventually I'm gonna add my staghorn fern right here. I'm gonna mount her and hang her up here. And then I'm just gonna take this light and hang it from the ceiling as well. Cause it drives me crazy that it's there and all the plants tend to grow and lean towards the light. So I'd rather them grow up. So I need to order another cord and then I would just hang it from the ceiling. And I think that would be a lot better and a lot more efficient. Um, I'll also be able to put like a little bit more plants in this area, but yeah, this just drives me crazy. It's clamped to the back right there so that's that so more updates on some propagations i took a whole bunch of cuttings from my string of hearts and i just potted them up in there and you know i think they're actually growing roots oh they are look at that oh look at that so it just goes to show you how easy it is to grow string of hearts like i have more success of rooting them in soil than rooting them in water and you don't have to worry about any transition period so once those are more rooted i'm going to add them into this pot because i want this pot to be really lush and full so i'm going to need to get maybe a deeper pot that's the only thing about these plants like i want one that's not really huge in diameter like this circular planter is perfect but i just need it to be a little bit deeper so i can fit more plants because those roots are pretty crazy up in there but since that chomp she's grown like this plant is just it's a weed really and truly it's a weed because i'm pretty sure i had cut her till she was like here and now she's just grown all of this and she's really thick down here and also really tangled <laughs> and then same thing with the variegated string of hearts I did that as well here, and I'm not sure. Like, I'm pretty sure she has some roots. Oh, I think you could see some in there. So she has some roots. She's not as rooted as the regular one yet, but that's really cool to she see. Oh, she's thirsty too. So we might not have been as successful with this one as we were with the regular string of hearts. Interesting. I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with her. My variegated string of pearls are still doing really well. They're actually getting super long. We do occasionally get some dry pearls here, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these vines and kind of pin them down at the top so we can get a fuller plant. But I'm actually really proud of myself that I've been able to, hold on, keep this plant alive and thriving and group just looks so beautiful with some pearls coming down but yeah i should definitely uh do something about these bare stems maybe i will chop and prop her as well but yeah i'm genuinely shocked <laughs> i have not killed her yet and i want to thank group for that group you have really held held one down for the team thank you <laughs> My pothos is also getting super bare and leggy up here, which is really sad. I'm gonna have to do something about that. But her bottom is growing. Oh, look at that variegation coming in. Oh, that's so pretty. She's getting a lot of light from this Vivo sunlight or this panel light. It's not Vivo sun. I don't remember what that one's called. But yeah, this bottom part area is still getting really good lighting. And growing really well and the top part still gets light from here so this light is like super bright she also has new growth coming in at top so she's doing well but she has dropped leaves and i think it's just because i was letting her get super dry she's also like really kind of root bound in that pot but this pot is just massive and i don't want to get a bigger pot so i might have to go in and trim up her roots a little bit and then just chop up some of those bare stems and fill her out a little bit more. But if I do end up selling this syngonium, I might put that pothos there and just have the pothos growing up the wall. I think that's what I'm going to do because really I'm just over the syngonium. I mean, even the elbow syngonium, like she's pretty 
But yeah, they just don't really do it for me. I think the only Syngonium I'm going to keep is my Red Arrow, just cause she's so beautiful. How can you not love this plant? It's so dark and then those undersides are so maroon. Yeah, she's beautiful and she's just doing absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, I senses put out some new beautiful leaves. Oh my God, look at how big that is. Oh, that is shocking. I did not realize they were that big. That's insane. Calista or Finlay Sonii, look at that. New tendril coming in and she also filled out her leaves a lot. Rosita has these beautiful new leaves coming in. Memoria, oh, look at those dark, beautiful leaves. <gasps> Oh, they're so pretty. Who is this? Oh, this is another new tendril from her. Oh, it's so cute. Uh, Globulosa. Look at that new beautiful leaf. Oh, so beautiful. And then also, if you remember my Sarawak, I had moved away from the grow light because I wanted to experiment uh, with sunlight and with Hoyas. And apparently um, some Hoyas will grow really small leaves when they're getting a lot of sun. So one tip is to move them away from light and give them lower light and they will start getting bigger leaves. And it has worked for me because this is a new leaf and that is significantly bigger than these leaves she was putting out when she was under here, like right under that grow light. And then look at this leaf here. Oh my God, it's getting bigger. Ah, it's so exciting. Oh, shit. I do that all the time with her. Sorry, gal. So that's beyond exciting to see. We're trying to get to this size again, like those original leaves that she has. So really excited to see that. Hopefully she keeps growing bigger and <laughs> yeah, we get massive leaves. Oh, and then also my Stanleyana is growing. She had a really big runner that I chopped up and now she has put out a new leaf that's really beautiful. Uh, I don't really grow Stanleyanas that well, but this one seems to be doing all right. Oh, and my No ID Plowmanii has two new growth points after I chopped her up. So that's really amazing to see, uh, especially because she was doing so terrible before. So excited to see what that does. Here are some of my varicosum cuttings that I ended up taking. And these actually have roots. Look at those roots already. And it's only been a couple weeks. That's just amazing. But yeah, I haven't even rewatered this and it's not even really saran wrapped on this container that well, but it's enough to keep humidity high in there and she's getting a lot of light. So that's really cool. Once I know that all the cuttings are rooted, I will take the cover off and kind of acclimate them to normal light. My Diani Duel has not done anything for me and I'm kind of disappointed and I'm kind of frustrated because I thought at least by now we'd have two leaves, but no, we have nothing. I don't know what to do. So here's Umbelotta and she suffered a lot from my underwatering. Um, I looked at her and she was just super thirsty. All of her leaves were drooping. Uh, she had four yellowing leaves, like completely yellowed leaves. So I had to water her and, uh, you know, since she has dropped all those leaves and she's down to two leaves. So another thing I want you guys to vote on in the comments down below is let me know, should I chop her? Because we all know if I chop her, she will start putting out bottom growth and fill up this bare stem. Or should I just let her keep growing so she can kind of have like that tree life, tree like effect where, you know, trees have like a whole trunk that's bare and then they have all their leaves at the top. I really want to chop her because then I will be able to propagate the top and then I will still have that bottom, but I'm going to leave her fate up to you guys. So let me know in the comments what I should do. And then um, whenever we decide on what to do with her and the melanochrysum, I will chop up my Diefenbachia reflector and just do one whole big chop type video. <laughs> I want to do like an official update on all the plants that I have chopped up and what they're like now, uh, just cause I think that'd be fun to do. Also, I feel like my old man cactus is getting a little thicker 
now that he's getting some really high light. Um, that's why I put him under here because as you can see, he was getting really thin because he was not receiving as much light as he'd like, I'm sure. So I'd slowly upped the watering on her or on him, I guess. And <laughs> hopefully he'll start getting thicker. I love that plant and I'm excited to grow it out and just see how big it gets. Although I'm also tempted to cut it. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I guess because I know the benefits of what plants do when they're cut and how much fuller they get that I'm interested to see what would happen with a cacti. I haven't done that with cacti really ever. So it would just be interesting to see like, would he put out an entirely new baby or would he branch out? If you know, let me know because that'd be really interesting. Um, also, Treyubiana, still doing good. Put out those new leaves there. Uh, I want her to put out more. I might need to treat her again. Uh, I'm not sure. But she also put out some new leaves down there as well. So, yeah, all Hoyas down here are doing amazing. My variegated obovada there. Oh, I don't even know if I shared the fact that my obovada bloomed for me. There is a peduncle right up there that bloomed. So I'll insert footage of that, but that bloom was really nice. It wasn't really strong and fragrant. Um, it smelled very, it smelled floral, but it was very, very faint. Uh, I did end up <laughs> rubbing together that flower and the flower from my Hoya Bella like directly together, but <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> I'm terrible at pollinating plants, but I heard that pollinating Hoya specifically are just difficult in general, which is so interesting to see because bugs can just so easily pollinate plants in Hoya, but <laughs> yeah, that was just fun to do. But yeah, she's doing really good, really well as well. My Raphidophora cardantha hasn't been doing too well. I did underwater her and she her leaves got super curled and um, yeah, they're not, they're, it definitely set her back. But all the propagations that I took have fully rooted and I don't know what to do with those. Maybe I will trade them out or something because um, it's just such a headache getting them to like be potted up because they're so tiny. But this is what I mean. So you can see all that new growth, <laughs> how tiny they are. It's crazy. Uh, so yeah, this is the new growth versus the old growth I was getting before I chopped her. So a lot of these pieces are rooted, but having to pot up these pieces is just such a hassle and such a stressor, which is like the downside, a big downside to shingling plants. But yeah, just thought I'd uh, share that. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them now, but I'm just gonna keep them in this container. So <laughs> this is what they, they've been in here since uh, November of last year or so. Um, it's been in here a good while, actually. You can see those roots coming through. Holy crap. Whoa, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, so these are definitely ready to <laughs> uh, do something. Well, that wraps up all the updates I have for the month of February, which is so crazy that January already blew by. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you sticked around, stuck around this far, and you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, help propagate this community with me. I would absolutely love to have you. And go ahead and give a thumbs up to the video if you like houseplant updates. And I will see you all in the next one. Hope you all stay safe, stay happy, and healthy. Okay, bye.